Okay, so now we're going to talk about the two cycles that a virus can go through. And depending on the virus and the environmental conditions, they can kind of go between these two cycles. Um, it totally depends um, how it works. So they're called the lytic and the lysogenic cycle. So we're going to start by talking about the lysogenic cycle. And what's going to happen in that case is it's going to infuse its DNA into the cell and, and actually become part of the cell's DNA. And then it's just going to tell the cell to go through mitosis. Well, if you think about it, right before mitosis, we replicate our DNA. So what's going to happen is we're going to replicate the viral DNA without even knowing it because it's kind of snuck in and put itself in there. And now we have two cells that have that viral DNA and so on and so on. So that's the lysogenic cycle. So sometimes if you're infected with a virus but you aren't showing any symptoms of it, it could be that you have the lysogenic cycle going on, right? So there are temperate viruses or temperate phages, and they're going to be ones that start out lysogenic and then go to the next one we're going to talk about, which is the lytic cycle, okay? So, like I said, it's going to um, just cause the cell to go through mitosis, and every time it does, it's copying the DNA. But it's not really doing anything else. It's not hurting the cell. It's not really doing anything crazy, right? The lytic cycle is going to be different. So, remember, lysis is a cell exploding, right? So during the lytic cycle, what's going to happen is it's going to get some sort of chemical signal and that's going to tell it to start telling the cell to make a virus producing factory. So now the cell is going to translate that DNA and actually make all the pieces for a bunch of different viruses to be um, released. But what's going to happen is the um, host cell is going to get so full with those viral parts that it's actually going to explode. And that's when you start to become symptomatic for a couple of reasons. One of them, your cells are exploding, kind of an issue. Secondly, your body is going to get some sort of response that's going to say, we need to um, get the immune system going and we need to attack this. So you're going to produce antibodies and those types of things to go after the virus if you can. So I have a picture to kind of show you what I'm talking about um, as far as the different types of um, life cycles there are. Okay, so uh, we could start here. So here is the lysogenic cycle on this side. So what happens in the lysogenic cycle, there's that viral DNA right there. It's going to become part of the cell's DNA. It's going to tell the cell to go through mitosis. And as it does, you're going to have a new copy of DNA in each cell. And now you've copied that viral DNA for it. Now, it can go into that lytic cycle. In the lytic cycle, it's going to get that signal that, oh, it's time to make all the viral parts. The cell is going to get so big that it explodes, and then those can go and do that to other cells. So that's kind of how the whole process is going to go through as far as these life cycles go. And I shouldn't say life cycle because they're not living, right? Now, there are going to be certain types of viruses, and they're going to go straight to the lytic cycle. And that's going to be a virulent virus. So that's just going to skip that lysogenic or maybe a very short lysogenic cycle and go right to the lytic. So examples of stuff that would do this. Um, I always love telling the story. This is so mean of me, but I'm sorry. It's hilarious. So my husband is a germaphobe, and we were on a flight to New York, and he was on the aisle seat. And I was all jealous until this happened. So um, he fell asleep and he had his mouth open. And I watched this all happen in slow motion. And I just see this guy go across the aisle. He's like, achoo. And I just see like all sorts of stuff flying into my husband's mouth. And my husband's like, oh, no. Oh, no, did that just happen? You know, he totally freaks out, right? Honestly, I would say six hours later, he got so sick and looked exactly like that guy did on the plane. Oh, he was so mad. I was just pointing and laughing because that's how I roll. But anyway, um, what I want you to get out of that is that that went straight to the lytic cycle most likely. That's why he kind of was symptomatic so quickly. And so we would say that is a virulent virus. Now, something that would be more like a temperate virus or a temperate phage um, that could be something like herpes, right? So um, someone can have sex with someone who has the herpes virus and they may not show symptoms for like six months. Then all of a sudden they get tired or stressed or something like that happens and all of a sudden they have an outbreak, right? So what's happening is that virus is just kind of laying dormant or in that lysogenic cycle and then they get that trigger from the stress or whatever it is and they have an outbreak, right? Um, good times, right? So that's going to be how the cycles work. In the next video, we'll talk about differences between different types of viruses.